Hello, my name is Sam Durkin, I'm an artist, and today we're going to create an abstract painting of a stream in a woodland. The idea is to keep it loose and free. The photo I'm working from today comes from viewer Isabella Uden, moderator of the Facebook group Creative Cafe. Link in the description. If you'd like me to create a piece based on one of your photographs, I'll let you know how to do that later on in the video. This will be a digital painting, but the approach will give similar results to traditional mediums. We start out with a quick sketch of the scene. And using the Real Oils Smeary brush, we get down to a rough background. In this stage, and throughout, we'll need to embrace our inner child. And not worry too much about the detail, or the realism. Just allow it to be a mess. Almost forget your inner critic. Now we adjust the opaqueness of the brush. This is like adding more thinner or using less paint, and it will mean more blendy effects can happen onto the canvas. We're going to do this across the whole of the painting. Just to give us an almost dreamlike image. Now that we've got the basic undercoat done, we use a tracing paper and an oil bristle brush to get some more detail and a general idea of where the trees are. If you're using traditional media, you can either do this by eye or a reference photograph, or use the projector to get a general idea of where things are. Once again, as we work, we reduce the opaqueness of the brush, this time getting more translucent effect, allowing more paint to show through and mix with the strokes. I'm using a flat-headed brush to give a far more chunky and unnatural feel to the work. This prevents us getting too fiddly with our brushwork and gives a more abstract feeling. We add a few areas of blue-grey to the background to give the impression of light coming through the trees. Let's try out the blender bristle brush to see what effect it may give. Yeah, that's not bad. It's an interesting, uh, interesting effect it gives. Yeah, it's not bad at all. So 
switching to the tracing paper to get an idea of where everything is. Just to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Well, maybe not. Let's go back to the bristle brush. We can use that effect for another time. Reduce how dense the paint is again. Yeah, I think that effect works much better for the water. Sometimes you try things out, you make a few mistakes maybe, and you learn to live with it. Even encourage it to happen. Obviously in a digital painting you could hit undo, but I prefer not to do that. With a smaller brush it's time to bring in some chaotic lines to give impressions of branches. We're referencing the tracing paper again, but not copying exactly what we see. As you can see, I've worked on the painting some more. Unfortunately, the recording messed up, so you won't get to see all of that. But what I did was I continued to use the bristle brush with a low opaque paint, adding in some extra areas of blue where none existed, just to bring some extra life to the painting. I changed back to the smeary oil brush to get a wet feel of the water. Then I changed to a dry palette knife to create some movement into the work. Pushing and pulling the painting backwards and forwards from reality. It really adds some quite dramatic effects. Then back to the bristle brush again, just to add in some abstraction. Being extremely bold here, bringing vertical lines in and horizontal lines, just to break the painting up. Throwing in some thin brush strokes to give the impression of tree branches, and then a smaller brush to do small vertical and horizontal lines to break the image up and give an impression of what's happening while also increasing the abstraction. And here we have the final piece. If you'd like your photo worked on by me, visit my Facebook page linked below and send me a message. If you have any questions about what you've seen or suggestions, leave a comment below. Like, subscribe and hit the bell button. Thank you for watching and goodbye and see you next time.